Hello, I'm Richard Vobes. I'm out on another of my exploring walks, my walks in England. Behind me, I don't know if you can work it out, it's very, very faint and it'll be a long way from you, but that is Arundel Castle in West Sussex, about 50 to 60 miles from London, about 10 miles to Chichester and about oh, 47 or so miles from Brighton, down in West Sussex, close to the south coast. And this is the, I guess it must be the Arran Valley. I'm not too sure about that. And I'm taking a, a sort of exploratory look at a little village, a rural village called Burfham. I don't know that much about Burfham, but I can tell you that it was originally built up since you know, King Alfred times, the Saxons, when they created Burrs, which I suppose is where it gets its name from. I'm going to start at the church, just going to weave my way through here and then take you down through some of the, what I think are sort of chocolate box houses, beautiful flint cottages. I've just got to open the gate first of all, which is not always easy when you're holding a microphone. And then I'm going to take you around the front of the church you won't be able to see a huge amount because we're very close to it. Let's have a look up here and you'll get a, a better idea. There's a beautiful flint and sandstone tower by the looks of things and quite an ancient doorway. And we'll circle around here. You can just make out the thatched roof of a cottage. And then there's the doorway, of course. And then down there, that goes down to the village. But I'm not going to take you down that way to start with. I want to, first of all, see if we can get a, a decent view of the church, which it does look rather resplendent, I have to say. It's a little windy today and a bit overcast, so I apologise for that on my walk. I'm going to take you through the graveyard here. You can see it's got some very old brick buttresses on the, on the church there. It's a very beautiful part of the world and very quiet. Unfortunately, I have another gate to go through, but this one I think is a little easier to manage and then I shall take you down through this dark and spooky passageway. Alfred the Great was a, a Saxon and he wanted to make sure that as he started to build England, that it was going to be safe from the Vikings. The Vikings were a scourge and were coming over in their, their long Viking ships, coming up rivers and causing mayhem and chaos as I'm sure anyone who knows their British history will remember. So Alfred the Great set up Burrs. Burrs were fortified places of administration, really. Um, they weren't necessarily towns and villages, but towns and villages did settle on them. And Burfham is one such place. It's on a promontory, a natural promontory, that actually overlooks the River Arran and and of course now looks across at the Norman castle, but of course the Saxons were well before the Normans and they had settled their burrs and their little villages. Now the strange thing is that a lot of this village now um, seems to be not on, I think, where the more fortified parts of Burfham were situated. Okay, so they're okay houses, but let's have a look at some of the more substantial ones here. Nice old English telephone box there, post box, 20 mile an hour speed limit, so make sure that you adhere to it. I think you'd have to be pretty well off to live in Burfham now, which unfortunately is a sort of sad thing 
in many ways, and I think this is happening to a lot of our beautiful rural villages, that the younger people cannot afford to live here. That it is, in fact, unless you've inherited from generations, it is really going to be millionaires who live around here. And probably these same people, and I may be wrong, probably don't like people like me poking their camera under their noses and filming them all. But you never can tell. The buildings here are a mixture of brick, flint, rubble, stone, sandstone. There seems to be a lot of sandstone here. All very tidy, all very nice. There are some modern buildings, I'm just passing one now, which of course don't quite match everything else. Probably early um, 1900s hillside cottage. It's got a sort of flint napped look to it, but they don't look particularly old. Whereas if you come up to the Georgian Dragon, here we come to a very old pub, which probably is brick now, but underneath that probably lies a timber frame. There's a big van in the way. The bit I want to take you to now is I've walked this ooh, many years ago and I think this is a, a public footpath, I'm rather hoping it is, is I want to take you out, I think now it's just playing field, to the main, oh hello, there's people setting up, to the main um, burr area, which is not down here, let's go this way. Behind me, behind me, the cricket pavilion, um, just coming into shot now, and what looks like a marquee where they clearly have weddings and special events and, and all of that sort of stuff. But I'm not interested in any of that nonsense. I'm interested in getting out. Now this to me is part of the burr, a part of a, a sort of spit of land that juts out, if you like, it's raised, as you'll see here on my left, it's raised, although the hills actually go a bit higher than this, but it dips into a valley that goes all the way, all the way round it. Now, I don't know if you have seen my film where I was looking for the gibbet of Jack Upperton. Well, he was hanged and then his body was brought and tarred in a metal hooped cage and then gibbeted on the hill, on Burfham Hill, which is just in front of me. In fact, beyond these trees that are immediately in front of us and then on that hill beyond. That's where he was gibbeted and you'd, you would have seen him from Burfham. Now I'm going to approach this tiny little gate here and try and get further onto this little spit of land. I say little, it's, it's you know, it's a nice walk. And beyond, if I just take you over here, you can see that we go back into the Arran Valley. So I'm nearly out of my little 10 minutes. I try to keep these walks 10 minutes, but um, I just want to try and rush along here to the end if that's possible. Oh, there's, um, let's double back here. Look, there's a, there's a seat here with a, well, you can't probably, probably can't see it. Hang on, let's see if we can get you down a bit. There we go. There's a seat there with a viewing platform so that you can see further into Arundel, in the Arundel way. Um, I'm aware now that I'm rushing, so let's just see if we can run along this path. And actually, here, it drops away quite dramatically. I just want to get to the end. Uh, before we finish. So what I'll say is, if you've enjoyed these videos that I do, my walking videos, they're not necessarily an authoritative historian's guide to anywhere, they're just an exploration, they're walks in England. Do 
subscribe, leave comments in the comment box. Don't forget to press the bell notification and you'll be notified as each one goes up. And give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed my slightly quirky nature. There is a great smell of cows, certainly cow dung. And as I walk, I can see that there's plenty of blackberries that are, are ready to come out. So here is, the, as, as far as we can walk, here is the end because it's now taking me down some steps, which is at the end of the burr and will take me right down to the bottom. And if the Vikings had come, and I don't know whether they'd ever attacked Burfham, I think it's unlikely, but they may have done. They're probably more interested in, in Arundel, a little Saxon village there, easier for them in their boat. But they would have had to have come up this rather steep hill. And in their day, they wouldn't have been aided by steps. And here we are. I'm at the bottom. And that's that. Well, if you've enjoyed it, I hope you'll join me again on another walk. Now I've got to climb all the way back up there and find the car. Goodbye. I just wish the blackberries were in season. I could have had some sus sustenance on the way up.